Hey guys, welcome back to the Dr. Cliff AUD vlog. This is vlog number 109, and today I'm not really sure how I'm going to explain what I'm trying to talk about. I might just need to talk about it, but um, I guess it's this aspect of maybe like duplication of me. Like, have you ever seen that movie Multiplicity? I think it was with Michael Keaton, where he actually um, cloned himself so he could like do things that he wanted to do um, and then he could have his clones do all the other stuff that he didn't want to do. Um, that's kind of like what I'm talking about today. But uh, before I get into what I actually mean by this, if you could do me a favor, click the like button, really helps out the channel. Of course, if you are not subscribed yet and you want to see more videos like this, if you hit the subscribe button with notification bell, that is going to uh, essentially give you a notification every single time I publish a new video. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about what I mean. So, if we just rewind a little bit here and go into when I first started my clinic, I really set up my clinic in a way to where I just spend like an extreme amount of time with my patients and I followed comprehensive best practices to make sure that my patients experienced like the best possible outcomes that they could with whatever hearing aids that we decided to have them use. And it um, went really well, to be honest with you. And then of course I started creating video content, kind of explaining all of these concepts and kind of explaining what things you should expect on the patient side of things from your hearing care professional. And so whether or not you came into my clinic or whether you went into another clinic, you were just better informed about what things should be done to help you achieve your highest level of hearing or highest you know, hearing capabilities. Um, but this comes along with a problem. So the problem that was created, that I created, was that the marketing, so like the videos that I make, and even though I'm not like pitching myself all the time when saying, hey, come in to see me so we can you know, treat your hearing loss or sell you hearing aids or whatever, it kind of had that effect anyway. Um, a lot of individuals sought me out, not just locally, but sought me out from around the country. We've had people travel into the country to get treatment from me at my clinic. And while that's fantastic, and I don't want this to come across as me complaining at all, the problem that that created is that my schedule got really, really busy really, really fast to the point where now uh, we start having struggles with my schedule of scheduling my existing patients and adding new patients to my schedule. And uh, one thing that I did back in late 2019, you guys are probably aware of already, which is I started this Best Practice Pro Network, which was essentially a nationwide network of hearing care professionals who also followed best practices. And they'd go through this vetting process, so I felt comfortable that if I referred people to them, that they would actually give them a high level of care, or at least to some degree similar level of care that I would provide inside of my clinic. And, you know, to be honest, that worked well for quite a while. Um, it kept individuals inside of their hometowns or their home states, uh, or at least in their, you know, geographical region that they're in to get hearing care. And I think that that's really important from a hearing care perspective. Uh, with that said, I never will turn down treatment for someone. So if someone is like, Cliff, um, I'm either coming to you or I'm not treating my hearing loss, it's like, well, come and fly out to Arizona and we'll treat your hearing loss. And we, we've gotten really good at that over the course of the past couple of years. Um, but what we're reaching right now is kind of, I don't know if it's called a breaking point or whatever you wanna call it, which is my time is limited. And I'm spending all of this other time on my free time, like out of the clinic of creating content and starting up other things to help people achieve better hearing outside of my clinic. And it's just, like I said, it takes up a lot of my time. And so now we're in a situation where, where people really want to come in to see me, but you just, I mean, it's getting really tough to see me. You might have to schedule out really, really far in advance um, if you're in a time crunch. So for instance, out here in Arizona, people travel here during the winter time to live here, and then they go back home to the northern states or to the Midwest or whatever the case may be uh, for the summertime. And, you know, snowbirding, right? 
And the issue with that is, is that when you come in to see me and it's like, well, we can't even start your treatment for another month and a half or whatever. And then it takes six weeks to go through your full fitting sequence to make sure that we follow comprehensive best practices. Now we're running into issues where you can't even get treated this go around while you're out here, unless you're going to stay longer into the summer or whether you're, or potentially you just wait until the next winter or fall when people start coming back out to actually do your hearing treatment. And to be quite honest with you, that's unacceptable. That No one should be delaying hearing treatment for any reason, um, let alone uh, not, me not having enough time on my schedule. So uh, with Ashley's help, my wife Ashley, who's essentially the, the clinic, uh, I don't know what we call it, the clinic director at Applied Hearing Solutions, we ended up, and a lot of you know this as well, we ended up hiring a consultant to come in and try to help us solve mainly this problem. And the problem came down to the standardization of what we do inside the clinic. So uh, I think standardization is really, really important. It's not that we just like put people through like cookie cutter treatment or anything like that, but it's important to know that, that there are certain things that we are doing inside the clinic that all of us are doing the same thing inside of the clinic. And that, gets, that keeps treatment outcomes very, very similar between different providers. So basically what we're doing is that we are duplicating me. We are recreating myself to solve the problem of me having limited time. And so when you really think about it, so we have another doctor in the office. We also have a fourth year audiology resident is what we call her, where she's going to be actually graduating here in a few months. And we want to keep her on the staff at that point in time. But what I'm trying to get to here is that if I can standardize the way that I do things so well and train these individuals so well that they do things essentially the way that I do them and they achieve the same level of outcome from a treatment perspective, then essentially what we've done is duplicated my abilities. Now, you know, I think a lot of people think that when they schedule to come to my clinic, they're like, well, I only want to see Dr. Cliff, like Dr. Cliff is my guy. That's, that's who I want to go to. He's the only one who's going to be able to figure out my hearing loss and get me treated the best I possibly can. And while I'm very flattered by that perception, it's just flat out not true, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, if best practices are being followed and we're doing it in a person-centered care way, which means that we're taking your wants, needs, and values into account when we're recommending and conducting treatment, as well as including you in the treatment process, like your decisions and, and things like that, your preferences in the treatment process, then we're going to achieve the same level of outcome that we would with a different provider as you would with me. And it's even gotten to the point now where I will do a consultation with a patient inside of my clinic. And if there's a time crunch to get this individual treated as soon as possible, I will actually take that patient and have you be actually go through the treatment process, the, the best practice fitting sequence with my other audiologist or with a resident audiologist. And that has actually really opened up my time to be able to continue to serve my existing patients that have been coming to see me for years, as well as seeing new individuals, helping them understand the process and feel comfortable with the treatment that we're as a clinic going to provide them and just have another provider provide that care. Now, one thing I should clarify, if you have seen the movie Multiplicity, you know that like each time that he clones himself, there's like defects in one of these other clones. Um, that is not what is going on inside of the clinic. It's not like I'm passing off patients to another provider who is not as good, right? I mean, when you think about my, my resident audiologist right now, who's not technically an audiologist yet, but she will be here in a couple of months, she's been working with me and studying under me for almost a year at this point. To the point where like, if you go through a consultation or a fitting with her, you're like, wow, they say, you know, they, they speak the same way. They, we don't say the exact same things, but we kind of approach everything from the same way. That's because when you're going through a best practice checklist to make sure that you don't miss anything and to make sure that you're um, achieving a really, really high outcome from a treatment perspective, it's very consistent. Um, yes, you have to you know, modify it a bit depending on, again, a, an individual patient's wants and needs and ultimately like what devices you're treating them with. But the, in the grand scheme of things, things become very, very similar. 
And it's kind of like, I don't know why I'm bringing up these movie references, but it's kind of like, you know, Groundhog's Day in a way, where each day in that movie is, is the same day, but it's a little bit different because essentially the actor, who was it, Bill Murray, um, knows what's coming and he can totally orchestrate the day that he wants to. And so it's, it kind of creates a situation where we know that someone's coming in to get hearing treatment, but we need to figure out the best way to approach that particular treatment um, in, in a unique way. And so while it does feel repetitious to some degree at some point, um, every case is absolutely unique. Now we do get some pretty tough cases in the clinic. Essentially what I mean by that is that there are certain types of hearing losses that are more difficult to treat than others. And when someone goes somewhere else and they don't have a really good treatment outcome, they contact us because they're like, you know, you're basically my last chance. You know, we know that you approach everything from a unique perspective and that you're gonna be following best practices through my treatment uh, plan and so they're like you know it's either us or nothing and to be quite honest with you I'd feel 100% comfortable whether it was me having to conduct that treatment or whether it was any one of my other audiologists on the staff having to conduct that treatment and while we're not quite there yet I mean there's still a lot of training that needs to happen to make sure that we're extremely consistent and it doesn't just come down to the providers being consistent we want our front office staff to be consistent as well and standardizing that aspect of it is arguably even more important than us standardizing what we do as audiologists. Because when you think about it, a lot of the little things that go into like continued performance with hearing aids is the front office really taking ownership of making sure that things are facilitated in the proper way. So let me give you an example. If someone calls up the clinic and says, hey, my right hearing aid is not working, what do I do? Well, we have a certain system that the front office will follow in order to try to figure out potentially what the problem is. Maybe they make recommendations based on the feedback they're getting from the actual patient to say, hey, why don't you try this or do that, whatever the case may be. Um, and if that doesn't work, then they know that they need to get that to the attention of either myself or one of the other audiologists on the staff. And then once we tell them, oh, hey, well, they need to do this or they need to drop it off or whatever, then they're the ones responsible for communicating that with the patient, having them come in, take control of those devices, make sure that they communicate with us everything that needs to happen with that device, and then we fix it or get it fixed, whatever the case may be, and then we take it back to the front desk and say, okay, device is fixed, you take it and you do what you do based on the procedures and the standards and protocols that we have in place. So really, it takes a team. I mean, it's gone from you know me being in a uh, one small room as a one-man show, taking all the phone calls, scheduling all the appointments, ordering all the devices, checking them all in, testing all of them, conducting the fitting, um, actually collecting payments at my desk that I would do all of this stuff at, now to the point where it, we've, we've grown to a big team and we have to make sure that all of us are doing things the right way consistently. Otherwise, there's breakdowns in communication or what have you, and it leads to a poorer experience for a patient inside of our clinic. So I guess when I think about it, it's not just an aspect of duplicating myself, it's just an aspect of duplicating everything that we do inside the clinic for every single patient that we see. And I guess the, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't require me to see every single patient. I mean, there's a number of times where a patient of mine has an issue and I don't even find out about it until that issue is already fixed. And that just has really kind of solidified in my mind that, you know, I am not as important as I once thought that I was. I mean, as long as I'm able to share the knowledge that I have and the processes that I always followed from day one with everyone else on my staff, they are more than capable of handling pretty much anything that could come their way. But there's one thing that you really cannot duplicate, and that is the passion that I have for hearing treatment, for audiology, for hearing aids. And so really, anytime that we bring another individual on our staff, Passion with what we're doing is like the prerequisite because as long as you have passion as someone who comes in to be an employee inside of my clinic, um, you're gonna be successful because then I can teach you all the how-to with everything. But if you don't have passion coming in, there is no way that you're gonna be successful inside of my system because 
we do things at the highest level possible every single day. We never cut corners. And if you get someone who's not passionate about audiology, they are going to look for any possible way to cut a corner because there are certain instances where you're like, well, I mean, I guess I could get away without doing a test box measure on these hearing aids, but I know I have to do it, right? And so, you know, it's a, it's a situation where they're going to maybe do it, but not do it to the, the way that it needs to be done, or they're going to cut corners when they are doing it. Or maybe, you know what, maybe I can get away without doing it. And, and then they don't do the measurement at all. And that's just not acceptable inside of my clinic. And the only way to prevent that from happening is to have someone who's passionate about audiology and giving them the proper systems and protocols to follow. So no, I think by the thumbnail of this video, you probably thought that there were actually two Cliff Olsons, and there are not two Cliff Olsons. There is one Cliff Olson and several other individuals in the office who are just as capable as I am at treating your hearing loss. That's all that I really wanted to talk about today, guys. I really appreciate you hanging on with me for this entire vlog. I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you next week.